Oops. <laughs> Hello everyone. Thank you for joining me today for Freeform Dreadlock Talk. My name is Dark Moon Doll. I'm your host for today. I like to do this show once a week on Wednesdays where people submit questions about Freeform Dreadlocks and I try to answer them of the best of my ability based on my personal experience having Freeform Dreadlocks. So today's question was uh, posted to me by a uh, screen name Miss Miko 77. Let me get a little closer. Um, she asks, uh, this is the letter she sent me. I want to just kind of read the letter to give people an idea of what's going on here. Just wanted to say I've been following you for a long time. I really enjoy your videos and positive vibes because it helps me to be able to make choices for my hair and spirit that I have been working on for a while. Like you, I started out with a lot of chemicals in my hair, from jerry curls to perms, and the final style was tight braids. Then I started locking at a salon, went on to start locking at a salon, went on to twisting my locks every two weeks for about 10 years, and dyed them. At about three years ago, my locks started to get weak and break off from the dye at the ends, and I would have to either pull the tips or finally just trim most of the dye out. So when I would wash my hair, there wouldn't be so much shedding. About two years ago, I got tired of twisting my locks. When I became pregnant, I just wanted to focus on my baby and got married as well. I would just wash my locks and go, and I was really free, and it was really freeing. I loved it, and I found that they started to gather together and grow together, which made my weaker locks very strong. And the locks took on a different experience, look and feel. <laughs> as anybody who has freeform locks knows. <laughs> they were healthy for once. However, I got my hair styled for my wedding in 2013 and twice in 2014 and once more so far this year. It looked nice, but usually products cause buildups, build up in my locks and pulled up my scalp from being too tight. Yep. I decided to cut the locks at the nape of my neck to stop the pulling. Plus, they had years and years of buildup in them over the years. And after I went through more hair pulling, more hair falling out after my son was born, I went back to basically only twisting when I felt like it. Maybe every three or four months, I use only coconut oil, and I do like what it looks like. But I also like the freeform look and feel when I don't twist. <laughs> I wonder, is this healthy for my locks to go back and forth twisting once every blue moon and then not? And what are your views on semi-free forming? Does it really exist? And should lockers do this? Okay, so thank you f for uh, sending this, uh, this question to me. So I'm sure this is a question that a lot of people are wondering themselves. And a lot of people surprisingly have gone through this experience where they had, a, you know, a hair, hair history of uh, using lots of chemicals, jerry curls, uh, relaxers, what have you is out there on the market, still being sold today, surprisingly enough. But anyway, um, yeah, that's, that's a very... Uh, That's a very interesting story because um, I this is what I think. I just go just from reading all of what you sent me. That um, if you just relax with it and um, not think too much about uh, what it should look like, think about how it should feel, how it feels on you. I mean, when you twist your hair uh, again, how does that feel to you? Does that feel right when you're doing it? Does that feel right? Do you question it when you start doing it? I mean, why are you actually really wanting to uh, retwist your locks? Um, I, this is my opinion, my opinion only. I don't believe it, that there's a, a semi-freeform locks. I think it's either you're freeform locks or you're not. I mean, freeform dreadlocks, as I've said in a lot of my other videos on dreadlock talk, freeform dreadlock talk is that, um, Freeform dreadlocks, for me, is no ma manipulation. The most that I do with my locks is put beads on them, you know, pull them up, maybe in a bun on my head, uh, put them in 
some sort of wrap or scarf, um, put like a hat on them, or just wear them out like this. Um, I think a lot of people will do the sim will what do what they call semi free forming because they're not ready to handle uh, having you know new growth coming out like this. I think that's the main reason why people do that. They think that they have to have a uniform uh, hairstyle in order to one fit, fit in with polite society, uh, to get a job. These are the beliefs that people have, um, and when you have those beliefs, and those beliefs become how you live, and they become true for you. So for me, um, I don't have anybody that I feel like I have to impress. Uh, my main focus is just to keep my head healthy. So uh, I try not to like wear tight anything pulling my at my scalp. And uh, it's windy today. <laughs> twisting your hair, or twisting my hair, let me say that, it's painful for me. When I was a kid, I didn't even like uh, my hair being combed. It hurt. You know, even when my mom would put like greases on it or whatever, um, to come through it or whatever, it hurt. It hurt my scalp, and I felt like that was wrong at a young age. <coughs> Excuse me. And as I and as I, I've, I've gotten more experience in just having free form dreadlocks, um, you know, there were times back way back when when I would. There were times when I'd put them in like really tight, you know, kind of uh, hairstyles. Like, but you don't want to. I don't want to do that because what it does is it pulls really tight. So when you want to make sure, it, when you do your hairstyles, if you're free-forming, and that's what you're going for, just keep it loose. And if your hair is too short to pull it back into something, get a headband or something, or wear hats, or put beads on them. Um, I think mainly the, the semi-free-forming uh, thing, I don't think that's healthy to go back. and After you've been spending uh, a lot of time just letting your hair be free and not being constricted, within a twist, you know, letting your scalp, you know, actually relax. When it's twisted at the root tight like that, it constricts it. I think it constricts the blood flow. You know, things are supposed to flow in order for, uh, to grow healthy and strong. I can sympathize with you going through all those experiences with the jerry curls and the chemicals and with the dye because I had that experience too. I've had my dreadlocks now. This is the month of this year, 18 years now. And um, when I dyed my dreadlocks on a consistent basis, I was doing it myself. I didn't go to a salon. I just, um, I lost a lot of length. Little pieces of hair came off. My hair is still getting healthy from that. So what I'm doing is just low maintenance, low maintenance, meaning keep it clean, you know, leave it alone. If the appearance of it is too much for you, you can always put a hat on. But I like it, you know, I like it. Um, it's not like I'm rebelling or anything. It's about me just really looking at my hair and seeing what it does. I mean, everybody's hair has its own personality to it. Not everybody's hair, when it freeforms, is going to look exactly the same. Um, yeah, semi-freeforming, uh, I don't think that's a good idea. If you're doing that right now and you're listening, that's cool, but I mean, I just don't think it's a good idea because it kind of seems futile. Because if you're coming, b if you're, if you're going on ahead and freeforming, letting your hair come out of your scalp naturally without twisting it up and doing all kinds of stuff to it, um, your hair has a time to just kind of do its thing grow like a tree, like branches on a tree, you know, have your roots strong, and that's how, I mean, a lot of people have asked me, how do you make your dreadlocks so thick? I don't make them thick, they make themselves thick, they come out of my hair, and then they shape themselves, sometimes I'll have really, like, like these wispy ones, these skinny ones, they seem really weak, right, because this is like new growth, when it grows in, it just might end up, like, joining in with this big one right here, you know, and like I do have little things on the end there. And that's from like even just back in the day when I used to uh, wear hairstyles that were way too tight. I did a video on uh, Bantu knots. Those were too tight on my head. 
I was just trying to find ways to put my hair up so that um, I could keep it out of the way if I don't want to get it wet in the shower sometimes. So, um, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's a very long explanation or answer to your question. Um, but you took the time out to write this nice and sincere letter, and I appreciate you watching me for all these years. Um, I pretty much have the same thing to say <laughs> after all these years. Is, I mean, the basic things to say about, you know, about freeform dreadlocks. They're just, I don't find them to be a hairstyle. I just find them to be the way my hair grows out of my head. And that's it. I mean, what do I do with them extra? Not much, you know, because I don't want to damage them. You know, I don't want to go through that you know the next show I'll do a video next week on uh, someone asked me a question about how do I feel about uh, dyeing your dreadlocks with commercial dyes uh, safely <laughs> so yeah that'll be next show but um, like I said you all I like to keep things simple when it comes to my hair I've gone through so many years of doing so much extravagance to it you know all these crazy hairstyles with lots of gel in them, hairspray and all that stuff in the 80s. And um, my hair took a beating, but unsurprisingly, I still have hair on my head, <laughs> you know? And uh, this journey, this dreadlocks journey has taught me that I have to be patient. You know, these are old habits that have to be broken. We always have to feel like well, a lot of people feel like they have to mess in their hair all the time and do stuff with their hair. A lot of times when you're touching your hair and twisting your hair and all that, it's got all this energy in it, right? Into your hands and your fingertips. And when you're touching your hair, that energy goes on to your, to your dreadlocks. So if you're, like, uh, stressed out and feeling, you know, just really, like, not knowing what to do, with your uh, dreads. You want to semi-free form them, you want to... For me, it's just like it's gotten to this point where I've had my dreadlocks for so long that um, I don't really, you know, I don't really focus so much energy on just them all the time. Um, so it doesn't bother me. I think mainly what happens with people, and it's happened to me in the past, is they uh, they feel self-conscious about